So now that we have found a way to enumerate all the good item sets, we now start to talk about how do we get the good rules from these good item sets. So let's take a concrete example once again. From the first set of items, which is red, white, green, we can identify a possible rule if red occurs, so does white occur. Or if somebody purchases red, they also purchase white. That's a possible rule. And this rule comes from an item set, red, white, which is a good item set. It's got the required level of support that we are talking about. So how good is this rule? Red implies white. So to find out how good a rule is, we want to find out what is the proportion of cases in which the rule is actually satisfied? In other words, we could say of all the cases in red in which red occurs, out of those, what are the cases in which white also occurs? Right? So here we are talking about the rule, not just the item set. So we consider the following ratio, cases in which red occurs. And that is 5. In this particular example, row number one, row number four, five, and eight, and nine. One, four, five, eight, nine. That is five cases. And then we look at out of these five cases, what is the number of cases in which white also occurs? Four. Okay. So in four of the five cases in which red occurs, white also occurs. That's pretty good. So that's what we mean by confidence in the rule. Okay, so we have identified a rule, red implies white, and we found that in four of the cases in which red occurs, white also occurs. That's a good proportion. So it looks like a good rule. On the other hand, suppose we looked at a rule red, white, Red implies white, and we found that red occurs in five of the cases, and out of those, only in one of the cases does white even occur. In which case, you would say, Well, I don't have too much confidence in that rule. That's not a great rule. Whereas, what we have seen here is a very good rule. Of course, ideal would have been 100% that in all the cases when red occurs, white also occurs. That would be a perfect rule. But in this case, we don't look for perfection. You cannot expect that, and therefore, uh, we are satisfied with this confidence. So that, that's the notion of confidence of a rule. Now that we've discussed confidence, once again, it's time for you to take a shot at it. What is the confidence for white implies blue? Or if white occurs, blue also occurs. What is the confidence for that? Again, pause the video, find your answer, and then we'll continue. So the answer is obviously we want to find out what is the proportion number of cases in which white occurs? And that happens to be eight, row one, row two, row three, row four, six, seven, eight, and nine. So it doesn't occur only in rows five and 10. So that occurs in eight of the cases. Out of these eight cases, how many cases does blue also occur in? So you see once again, uh, blue occurs in row three, along with white. Blue occurs in row 6 along with white and then in 8 and in 9. So in 4 of the 8 cases where white occurs, blue also occurs and therefore the confidence is 0.5. Now we found a rule earlier and we found a lot of confidence in the rule which says red implies white and we said that if in four of the cases where red occurs, white also occurs. So we had a confidence of 0 0.8. But we have to answer an important question here. What if red and white are just coincidentally occurring together and there's no big rule that is in operation? In other words, if white occurs normally with red or without red, it normally occurs at a certain frequency. Let's say 0.8. If that is the frequency for white, and if in all the cases where red occurs, white also occurs 0.8% of the time, 0.8 or 80% of the time, then it's no big deal because the same frequency with which white normally occurs, it also occurs with red. So really there, you're not really thinking about any great pattern that's going on. It's just white's 
normal frequency of occurrence right so that is what in that case the the co-occurrence of red and white would be simply a coincidence not a pattern so we want to rule that out so we do that by considering what is called as the lift ratio let's take an example and then we'll discuss it so again we are looking at red and white so we want to consider the proportion of times we would expect white to occur just randomly okay that is of all the cases what is the proportion of cases in which white occurs that is just white's normal proportion of occurrence and we want to consider that in this particular case that happens to be 0.8 which is in 8 of the 10 cases white occurs anyway that's 0.8 and then we want to consider the proportion of times white occurs when red occurs and that happens to be as we've already seen 0.8 as well okay because four out of five times when red occurs white also occurs okay so now we see that if you take this ratio you get the lift ratio for red to white as just one okay in other words what we are saying is although we saw that in 80 percent of the cases when red occurred white also occurred so that looked like a great rule it was a phenomenal confidence that we had the confidence of 0.8 Wow, 80% of the time when red occurs, white also occurs. That looks like a good rule. That's what we thought earlier. But it so happens that white is generally a frequently occurring color in our example. And therefore, there's nothing great that's happening when white is occurring with red because white occurs frequently anyway. And therefore, this rule is not really an important rule. Okay, that is. There is no special propensity that white ex, uh, exhibits to occur with red. It occurs with red in the normal frequency with which it occurs generally. And therefore, the rule doesn't give us any lift. That's what is the definition of lift. Okay, so that's the lift ratio. And this is what tells us how good a rule really is. It shows if the lift is high, then we are saying that the rule has some special propensity to occur over and above just random occurrences. So here we have a lift ratio of one. And a lift ratio of one really says that the rule is not any special occurrence. So ideally, what we would like is lift ratios which are above one. And much above one, really shows phenomenally powerful rules but generally we take anything that's above one so your turn once again so red white and green we know that this item set has a support of 0 0.2 what are the possible rules we have seen that already lots of rules and we are trying to identify from among these what is the lift for each of them so here what we are going to consider is rules just for the purpose of this example, let's consider only those rules in which all the three items occur. That is, uh, one on the uh, pre antecedent, two on the consequent, or two on the co antecedent and one on the consequent. Let's not look at all the rules. Okay. So again, pause the video, take a look at the rules, uh, the the rules in which all three items occur, and calculate the lift ratio for each of them. Let's take an example here. Uh, so the rules derived from red, white, and green, which is we are considering here only the rules in which all three are involved. Red and white imply green, etc., etc. So let's try to calculate the lift ratio for some of these. So let's consider the first one. Red, white implies green. Okay. So first we are just trying to find out what is the general proportion in which red and white occurs anyway. That's the denominator. Right which is proportion of times we would expect green to occur anyway, because green is on the consequent side. So what is the consequence normal proportion of occurrence? That will be the denominator. And the numerator is what is its proportion of occurrence with the antecedent, red and white. 
Okay, so we see that green occurs just randomly in 20% uh, of the cases, which is two of the cases. Green occurs on the first case and green occurs in the eighth case. It doesn't occur anywhere else. Okay, so that's called a 20% propensity, which is the denominator. And it occurs along with the antecedent to 50% of the time, right? That is, uh, when red and white occur, green occurs in the first case, it doesn't occur in the fourth case, and it occurs in the eighth case, okay? So it occurs in two out of the four cases, or 0.5% of the time, you've got green occurring when red and white occur, and green occurs in only 0.2% of the overall cases. So in other words, what we are seeing here is, even though green is a relatively infrequent item, its propensity of occurrence along with red and white is much higher than its normal frequency of occurrence. So the lift is going to be 0.5 divided by 0.2 or 2.5 is the lift. So definitely this rule has a lot of value.